If you have friends that are uh, 70 or older, uh, they need to know this about taking aspirin. There's an interesting new study which indicates that, you know what, it may not be worth it anymore. Um, <clears throat> it's called the Esprit trial. It was uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine um, in uh, September 16th of 2018. Basically what they did was they, uh, they had a huge number of... Um, of participants, 20,000 of them. Um, <clears throat> a, two, uh, two areas in Australia and the U.S. In Australia, it was uh, the Caucasian uh, group, and uh, in the U.S., it was African Americans and uh, Hispanic Americans. They actually published two different studies because they had an interesting uh, twist in terms of um, surprise surprises and the surprise was the, well, a couple of surprises the first surprise was the aspirin uh, for this group this study group did not really um, improve the uh, the health in fact they saw something different um, <clears throat> we'll uh, answer that question and a couple of other interesting twists about this and uh, just a minute, but first a, uh, pardon me, first a, uh, an introduction to me uh, and the channel. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, <clears throat> I started off as an ER doc, got very frustrated with the amount of preventable death, disease, and disability my patients brought into the ER. So I went to get training. Um, went to uh, Johns Hopkins and ended up loving the program, did well, uh, ended up running it, and have worked with uh, primary care docs and patients in the 30 plus years since then, helping them understand uh, and focus more on prevention as opposed to waiting till you get the disease and then trying to do something about it. And that's what this channel's about. It, um, it's been well received. We've got over 7,000 views a day and um, folks are tuning in to learn about what's going on because the science of um, prevention is changing every day. Uh, again, this uh, study is a really good example. Things change. Now, <clears throat> what happened and um, what was the big surprise? Actually, they saw an increase in death related to cancer. Now, they have some inflation of the uh, the numbers to help spread these out and make it very clear. But again, this was a, a clear signal in terms of increased uh, cancer rates. Now, that's never been seen. And even the authors said, look, this has never happened. They've done, there have been tons of studies in this area. Please be very careful and don't overinterpret this. The other thing they said was it was right along in, um, in lockstep until you got to like three and a half years. So, if you're over 70 and you've been taking uh, baby aspirin for a few years, uh, or uh, if you've been taking baby aspirin and you're worried about this, don't worry too much. Just uh, consider whether or not you want to continue taking the aspirin. Um, if you look at other <laughs> images here, at least on this part of the, um, the study, they didn't see a significant uh, increase of major hemorrhage or hemorrhagic stroke. Now, they published another analysis of this in the same journal and, and did uh, see some, um, some increase. So it, there was some, it, wasn't, it was uh, enough to be significant, but not, uh, not enough to get really upset about. Now, Here's the, uh, here's the other analysis, and uh, here's the question. So what are we supposed to do with all this? The, fir the first study was all-cause disability, and the second one was uh, uh, all-cause mortality. I think, the, um, I think it's way too early. And I agree with the authors. It's way too early to panic over a signal. A signal, again, is something that you've seen once in research, you haven't seen it over and over and over again. And research, uh, 
research by practical nature is always built to where you can get a random finding and we'll get a random finding one in 20 times. So <clears throat> what, do I, what do I advise my patients 70 and older? I'm giving them the facts. As usual, I give them the facts uh, and then I let them make their own choices. Uh, if I were 70, would I be taking aspirin? I have atrial fib, so I, take, I have to take a different kind of medication. It's a newer, newer oral anticoagulant. Would I take aspirin? At this point, I don't think I would. Now, <clears throat> this picture uh, is up here to remind me to mention one of the biggest issues around this study. Why do you think they saw such a, um, such a change from what we've been seeing in the past? Again, even the study authors mentioned all of the, uh, the previous meta-analyses meta -analyses have shown a positive impact on uh, all-cause mortality and disability with aspirin. This one didn't. Here's one of the key things to notice, and it's very good news. The uh, actual death rate was less than half of what they predicted. So we've got a few studies coming out recently where it's washing, it appears to be washing out the impact of aspirin, um, omega-3s, at least omega-3s in lower doses. I don't think I'd give up on omega-3s yet. But I'd start looking harder at aspirin. It looks like we're getting healthier. Thank you for your interest.